we're going to continue our discussion with bonds. Now, bonds are an interesting and unique type of situation, and it's one that I find a lot of people, not just students, but a lot of people in general, misunderstand. So before we get into the content, really, let's talk about what bonds are and are not. First of all, we are not describing anything that has to do with bail bonds here. That's a completely different system. Um, so this has nothing to do with that kind of bond. Now, a lot of times people hear, we hear people talk about stocks and bonds. And so we think that they are, stocks and bonds are the same thing or at least very similar. They're not, okay? Stock is equity. Stock represents ownership. We'll talk about those a lot more in the next chapter. Bonds are a form of debt. Okay. Bonds are a loan. It's a, a form of way to borrow money from a lot of people. So the way this works, essentially, this is a very simplified explanation, is when a company, we're going to talk about corporate bonds, there are municipal bonds and other kinds of bonds that are all similar treasury bonds um, that are all similar, but we're going to specifically talk about corporate bonds. So let's say that a company needs some money. They need a lot of money, a large chunk of cash. Now, they've got really two options that if you're a corporation, you can issue stock or you can borrow the money. So let's say that we've gone through the pros and cons and we've decided we're going to borrow the money. We'll talk more about what those pros and cons are in chapter 13. We decide we're going to borrow the money. Now we have a couple of options as far as how we want to borrow. We can go to a bank and say, hey, will you loan us a couple of million dollars? or a couple of hundred thousand dollars, if you will. Or we could say, hey, I'm going to take out a bunch of little bitty loans. Instead of borrowing $500,000 from the bank, I'm going to borrow $1,000 from 500 different investors, okay? creditors, 500 different people. So if I can get 500 people to loan me $1,000, that's the same as borrowing one big chunk. That's what bonds are. Bonds are a bunch of little bitty loans that companies make to in order to get a large chunk of cash. So bonds payable, again, are, are debts. They're usually issued in increments of $1,000. They don't have to be. Um, they can be issued in any increment you want. It's just that $1,000 is the norm. Now, when companies go out and issue these bonds or essentially borrow this money, let's we need to get one thing straight because if a company were to come to you or let's say they held a press conference and saying, hey, we need to borrow some money. Can I get 500 people to loan me $1,000? Nobody's going to take it. They're going to have no takers. Nobody's going to want to loan them the money. So what they do is they change the wording. They just, they change the semantics. They make it sound like they are selling something and but they're not really selling anything. You, as the investor, as the lender, as the creditor, you're not really buying anything, okay? So if you buy a bond, you didn't buy diddly squat. You didn't buy anything. You loaned the company money. You have a receivable and they have a payable. That's all that transpired here. Okay. Now, I'm not saying that bonds are a bad investment. Okay. I think bonds can be a very good investment. I personally have invested in bonds, but I do think you need to understand what you're investing in. They, you are not investing in the company. You are not an owner of the company. You are a creditor. You didn't buy anything. They're not selling anything. You loaned them money. So because they're trying to kind of keep it sound like they're selling something, they use word, they change the semantics of it. So instead of calling it the principle of the loan, they call it the face value. Okay, so we're going to say, hey, this bond has a face value of $1,000 instead of saying the principle of this loan is $1,000. So face value, maturity value, principal amount, par value, all of those words are used interchangeably. Now, I have a 
a problem with maturity value and par value. Those aren't technically correct terms, but we're going to find that talking about bonds, people don't use technically correct terms a lot of the time, right? Principal amount, face value, those are the terms that they use. That's the thousand dollars or whatever that we're selling the bond for. So the maturity date is the date on which the company is going to pay back the thousand dollars. So the way this works is let's just say that we're borrowing, we're issuing a thousand one thousand, excuse me, a hundred thousand dollar bonds. So one hundred bonds at a thousand dollars each, we're going to have a total issuance of a hundred thousand. Okay, and let's say this is a five year bond. The way this typically works is that we, the company, we're the ones issuing the bonds, we're the ones borrowing the money, we're the borrower here. We're going to borrow $1,000 from 100 different people. We're going to promise that we're going to pay them interest back every year for five years. Typically, we pay what's called a semi-annual interest, which means twice a year. So every six months, we'll send them a check for interest. We're not going to pay any of the principal back. We're just going to send them a check for the interest. Then at the end of the five years, we're going to send them $1,000 back. Okay. So the what's called the stated interest rate is the interest rate that's stated or written in the contract. You'll sometimes hear it called the contractual rate, the face rate, the coupon rate, the nominal rate. This is the interest rate that determines how much interest payments are when we send to the bondholders. Okay. Now we're going to talk about another interest rate in a minute, so this is why I'm really emphasizing the stated or contractual interest rate is the one that determines the amount of the interest payments. So again, let's look at this. So we have a five-year 9% bond. This 9% is the stated interest rate here. Okay, So this is the stated interest rate. And the face value is 100000 so that means that's that $100,000 bond, so the total is 100000 So if we're going to pay semi-annual interest, for five, means twice a year for five years, we're going to make a total of 10 interest payments. Each one of those interest payments will be for $4,500. You can see that calculation, 100,000 times 9% times 6 over 12. Semi-annual interest is paid every six months. So we're going to send the bondholders a check for $4,500 for 10 times, twice a year for five years. At the With the 10th payment, we're also going to send them the $100,000 back. So each of the bondholders will get their $1,000 back plus their last interest payment. So this payment number 10 over here, this is the maturity date. This is the date that the principal is paid back. Now, typically we sell bonds on, or we issue bonds on a market just like there's a stock market there is a bond market so we're going to put our bond up on the market and like if you were to put it on ebay or something the price will fluctuate so the way this works is the, so we put our bonds up. We said, hey, we got $100,000 bonds. We're willing to pay 9% interest on these for five years. Who would like to buy them? So the investors, which are the people that are interested in investing their money in bonds, interested in loaning money to corporations, they're out there looking for potential investments. They're comparing our company with all the other companies that have bonds on the market. When they look at our company, they may decide, you know what, I'm really not willing to pay you to loan you $1,000, okay? I'm, I'm just not. 9% interest, I, I'm not willing to loan you $1,000 if you're only going to pay me 9% interest, okay? If you were willing to pay me more than 9% interest, then I might be willing to loan you the money. Well, the thing is, we can't change the 9%. That's written in the contract. It can't be changed. So I'll say, well, I, I can't pay you more than 9% interest, but here's what I'll do. I'll sell you this bond for less than $1,000. So is the investor's like, okay, well, I, I'll go for that. So in that case, the bond is selling at what we call a discount. 
So the way this works is the bond holder, the creditor, the bar, the lender would say, all right, look, I'll give you $970. I'm just making numbers up here. I'll give you $970. You pay me interest on $1,000 for every six months for five years. And then at the end of five years, you give me $1,000 back. And as the, the bond issuer, I'm like, well, you know what? I need the money. So I'm willing to do that. Okay. Now, the flip side could also happen. It could be that we put our bond out there and, hey, 9% interest is way more than anybody else in the market is paying. Suddenly, everybody wants to buy our bonds. Well, I only have 100 of them, but there's way more than 100 people that want to buy our bonds. So those of us that have taken economics, what happens to the price when demand exceeds supply? The price goes up. So suddenly people are willing to pay more than a thousand dollars for a thousand dollar bond because they're willing, they want that nine percent interest. So now suddenly somebody wants to give me eleven hundred dollars and I'm going to pay them interest on a thousand dollars and then pay them a thousand dollars back at the end. But they're willing to do that because the nine percent interest on a thousand dollars is more than they were going to get anywhere else. So in that case, the bond is selling at a premium. This is when we receive more than the $1,000 for the bond, or if it's a discount, we're receiving less than the $1,000 of the bond. Now, regardless of how the bond sells, we still pay interest on $1,000. That does not change. And at the end of the five years, we still pay back $1,000. So the issue price does not affect the payment at maturity. It does not affect the interest payments. Okay. So the stated interest rate, the contractual rate, that's the one that's printed on the bond certificate itself. The market interest rate is a little more nebulous. The market interest rate is what the market, and the market is, is as collectively is all the people that are willing to invest money. Okay, um, so if you are actively willing to invest money in bonds, then you're part of the bond market. If you're not, then you're not part of the bond market. So collectively, what the market is demanding makes the market interest rate. So for example, if the market says, you know what, 9% interest is not enough, you need to be paying more. The market is demanding, let's say, 10% interest, but we're only paying nine, then that means our bond is going to sell at less than face value. It's going to sell at a discount. If w the market's saying, whoa, 9% interest is more than I can get anywhere else, then the market is saying, you know what, really you could have gotten by with paying less than 9%. Maybe you could have gotten by with paying just 8% interest then the bond will sell at a premium at more than face value. If it turns out that 9% is exactly what the, the market says we should pay, then our bond will sell at exactly face value, meaning $1,000 for $1,000. Now, it's really hard to determine what the market interest rate is. They don't just give it to you. The market doesn't come back and say, hey, by the way, we think you should be selling at 10%. So we're, there are formulas that we, you can use to calculate, to estimate what the market interest rate is. We're not going to do those in this course. You'll do those when you, for those of you that go on to university and take upper level accounting and finance classes, you'll do that there. We're just going to make some inferences about the market rate. So, for example, if we know that the bond is selling at less than face value, we know the market rate is more than the stated rate. If the bond is selling at more than face value, then we know that the, the market rate is less than the stated rate. Now, I want to talk for just a minute about how this market rate is determined, okay? So again, this is a little nebulous, but it's the market collectively is comparing your company and the riskiness of your company with all of the other companies that are issuing bonds. So each company has an inherent level of riskiness to it, right? If you're a new tech startup company, then you are risky than a long-term established company. 
the risk comes in a lot of forms. There's a there's the risk of, hey, you may go under and in five years you won't be able to pay us back the money that you owe us because you won't be in business anymore. So there's certainly a risk of that. There's a risk of um, the longer the bond term, then again, the more likely that you won't be in business to pay the, mo the money back. So a a 10-year bond is going to be perceived as riskier than, let's say, a five-year bond, whereas a five-year bond will be riskier than a three-year bond. There's also, again, like I said, the nature of your business, okay? You're a new tech startup company. You're going to be riskier than, let's say, you know, Apple, who's very unlikely to go out of business in the next 10 years, okay? So there's that level of riskiness as well. There is also a grading scale. Their bonds are graded on a scale of AAA all the way down to F. The a company called Morningstar grades the bonds. So the riskier you are, the lower your rating, the more interest you're going to have to pay to entice investors, right? So if you have two companies who are issuing bonds and one of them again is like, let's say a new tech startup company, they're going to have to be willing to pay a lot more interest than like, let's say Microsoft, because you're gonna feel a lot more comfortable investing your money with, say, Microsoft than you would with this new tech startup company. There's a direct relationship between risk and interest rate. The riskier you are, the higher the interest rate you have to offer. So those F-grade bonds, those junk bonds, they're going to pay a lot of interest. But if you buy those bonds, you're running a very high risk that they're only going to be able to pay you interest for a couple of years before they go under and then you don't get your money back. So they have to pay you a lot of interest in order to entice you to accept that risk.